In this video, we're going to be diving into a topic that's been on my mind a lot recently, which is my updated content creation workflow. If you've been following me for a while and maybe have seen my other content creation workflow videos, you know that I used to put so many hours into each video. And right now for my life and other things that are going on, it's just not possible to put that much time into content creation. But I still love this hobby and I want to keep doing it because I'm passionate about it. And I think there's probably people out there too that feel really passionate about content creation, but aren't sure how to fit it into their busy lifestyle or other responsibilities that they have. So I hope this video helps you because I have an updated content creation workflow that takes a lot less time than my old one and it's kind of like a minimal lazy girl way to be a content creator. So we're gonna cover everything from ideation to editing and I'll even share some really cool tools from Riverside that make this process go way faster. Everyone probably knows that editing is the most time consuming part of creating content, but when it comes to editing for me, I try to keep it as simple and as quick as possible. If you're not new to my channel, then you know that I haven't really done a rough cut of a video on my own in over a year. And this isn't because I have someone editing my videos, it's because I use Riverside and some really cool features from their platform to help quicken up some of the process of editing my video and have AI do it for me. I use the silence remover feature to remove all silences and filled pauses from my video with the click of a button. Manually, this would take me hours like it did years ago, but now it literally takes seconds. Riverside also has a time-saving text-based editing feature that allows me to edit my video by editing the transcript, which is the fastest way to take out rambling or double takes in your shots. Once I have the rough cut, I can also use features in Riverside to add subtitles, text, images, and overlays to my videos to help really bring them to life. And I'm really excited to share that Riverside's new mobile editor is live in their app. One thing I love about Riverside is they are always adding new features and new capabilities to their software. And for me personally, this is super exciting because I've been traveling a lot for work recently and sometimes I'm not able to bring my laptop with all of my editing software on it. It's really nice to know that I could upload my video to Riverside at home on my computer and then when I'm traveling I could open up the app and edit from there. Now the mobile app doesn't have all of the features yet but right now I am able to edit my video using the transcript editor in the mobile app which is a big help in and of itself and I know that Riverside will continue creating new features that will be awesome for this mobile app. I highly recommend giving Riverside a try if you're looking for ways to make editing easier and less time consuming. You can try it out for free at the link in the description box and if you decide you want to purchase a membership, you can use my code Camilla Ray to get 15% off. When it comes to thinking about ideas for content creation, it can be tempting to just see what other people are creating and try to replicate it. But I think it's important, especially when you don't have a lot of time, to really think about what kind of content could work well with your lifestyle, your priorities, and the way your life is currently set up. For example, maybe right now you're really focused on fitness and while you want to do content creation, you're not willing to skip workouts to film videos or edit videos. That's completely fine. You can combine the two and you can think of things like gym get ready with me's, a week of workouts with me, or what's in my gym bag videos as a way to combine those two interests. For me right now, a big priority is my family and also just investing in my social life. And I feel like I bring that into content creation by doing get ready with me's when I'm about to go out with my friends or adding my family into my vlogs and videos so I don't feel like when I'm spending time with them, it means I can't be creating content. I can combine the two. I used to heavily script a lot of my YouTube videos, but recently I haven't really been in the mood to like sit down and write. So I've kind of switched up my approach to how I plan my YouTube videos. And I feel like there's pros and cons to scripting versus not scripting your videos. 
For me, especially when I was starting out, it really helped me to have something to look at for if I got nervous while I was recording. It helped me make sure that I knew exactly what I wanted to say, and it helped me be more confident in what I was saying because I knew that I was prepared. On the flip side, I do feel like scripting takes up a lot of time and kind of creates a barrier when you're like trying to start recording a video. I do feel like while obviously people sound more eloquent when they prepare or script out what they're gonna say, sometimes it just is a little bit less natural and doesn't feel as conversational as if it wasn't scripted and you were kind of just rifting. So right now I'm striking a balance by just having like a bulleted script. So I know the key points that I wanna hit and some key things that I wanna make sure that I say, but that just provides a structure for me to start filming. And then a lot of what I'm saying or exactly how I'm gonna say it, I just decide on the spot while I'm recording. I will say I feel like this method works a lot better if you are very confident and very passionate about the thing that you're talking about. Like I need to know that I'm so passionate about what I'm talking about that I could talk for 10 minutes about it no problem without having something written already. Luckily I'm a yapper so that really isn't an issue for me. And also I want to make sure that I feel like I have like a handle on the subject that I'm talking about. I feel confident in what I'm saying. It's not something I think I need to heavily research before I share a video on it. Because I think that sometimes on camera if you're talking about something that you're not super confident about or you haven't done a lot of research or don't have a lot of knowledge on, you can come off on the screen as a little bit less confident than if you had done research. So right now I'm just not really doing videos where I need to do a lot of research on it. I'm really just talking about stuff from either my own personal experience or stuff that I've done a lot of research on in the past and I have actual information to share. Although I haven't been into writing as much lately, I have been really drawn to the visual elements of storytelling and creating videos. So I still do a shot list but I find that a lot of times in the past my frustration came from maybe making too detailed of a shot list and then especially with like lifestyle or vlog content I can think a day is gonna go a certain way and it doesn't go that way and then it would like in my head ruined my video in the past so what I do now is I kind of roughly sketch out the main shots that I hope that I can get for the video but I like to leave room and a lot of flexibility for if I end up not doing something that I thought I was gonna do or I'm not able to get a certain shot or if there's just unexpected things that come up that I do want to add and incorporate into my videos like a lot of times when I'm going to New York City there's so many things that happen or that I stumble upon that are just so unexpected that I couldn't have thought of or planned for before. And it actually makes it a little bit more fun to incorporate those spontaneous elements into my videos too. Okay, so when we talk about filming content, I kind of split it into like two different types. One is kind of like talking content. And usually if I'm talking about a specific topic or something, then I'm sitting here in my bedroom, like in front of you guys like this. And for this kind of content, I like to keep my setup super simple because I'm already gonna do my makeup and everything. And there's already a bunch of steps to take in order to start filming. So I try to make it so that it's a comfortable area and it's super easy to set up. The other kind of filming that I do is more on the go or vlog style film. So whether that's vlogging around my house or out at different locations and what I would say for that is really when you are vlogging your life and out and about things it's kind of hard to plan exactly what you're gonna see exactly the shot that you're gonna be able to get and just know what to expect but I think that actually makes it even more interesting to film so something that I do is I try not to limit myself to getting the perfect shot or even having to talk to my camera when I'm out in public. Whenever I see something that catches my eye or something that I'm like, hey, I am doing something that I would really like to have footage of later on, even if I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, I try to capture it and I can figure it out later. 
A perfect example of this is in my last vlog, I was running late for an event I was trying to go to and I wanted to explain what the event was before I went, but I didn't really have time. But I still recorded me getting ready and recorded little bits of the event and I just did a voiceover afterwards to explain where I was going, how the event was, and I still was able to bring you guys along and bring the moment to life by the clips and everything that I did. So it still felt like you guys were coming along with me. On the other hand, I would say I try not to go too overboard with filming because it can cause issues when you're editing. If you have so much footage and you're not sure what to do with it, it can either just make it take longer or make it a little bit harder to find a connecting line throughout your whole video. I also think that sometimes, especially if you're into lifestyle content or vlogs, you can feel pressured to record everything because everything could be content. And I think it's really important as content creators that we're just as intentional about what we are going to film as what we aren't going to film because a lot of times that can lead to overwhelm and burnout if we just think every day we need to be recording all this stuff that's kind of why I like batch creating one or two days a week now and leaving the rest to not have to film anything if I don't want to I even will set specific days where I will not record anything even if I feel like it because I know I need a break and I need to step away from my camera in order to keep it sustainable Yes, it's important to have a consistent upload schedule and it does matter, but it doesn't matter more than the quality of your videos and it certainly doesn't matter more than your mental health and other priorities in your life like family, your health in general, and all of those things. I think you should try to stick to an upload schedule as much as you can just because it also helps you stay structured and organized as a content creator and it creates you know an expectation with your audience but I do think that if you need to change your upload schedule or if you're just going through a period where you're gonna need to be a little bit less consistent with your videos just communicating that with your audience can be sufficient enough in the same vein I feel like sometimes as creators we become chronically online and don't really go outside and touch grass enough whether it's checking our analytics or looking at content all day to get inspiration sometimes we just get too attached and are too close to the material and while I do feel like some of that like getting inspiration from other people's content and looking at the performance of your videos is important I feel like it's only beneficial to a limited extent I actually find that it's usually when I step away from my phone step away from the screen step away from my channel YouTube studio my analytics step away from Instagram or TikTok, and actually get outside and experience life that is when I find myself being the most creatively inspired and I feel like it's on the days that I don't bring my camera with me that I end up looking at life through an actual cinematic lens and it makes me that much more excited for the next time I pick up my camera so that's my complete new content creation workflow that's been helping me stay sane and creative I hope this video has given you some ideas on how you can make content creation more sustainable and enjoyable. Always remember it's okay to change your workflow and your approach to things as other things in your life change and you can still find ways to incorporate content creation without it being so much of a hassle. And don't forget to check out Riverside using the link in the description box to help streamline your editing process. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I will see you in the next one and in the meantime don't forget to spend time creating. Bye.